USDA beef grades. If you're just starting out, they can be quite confusing, and it's hard to understand exactly which one offers the best bang for your buck. In this video, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of each grade, and we'll also discuss how dry aging can affect them, giving you all the information you need so you can make the correct choices at the grocery store. Let's dive in. Okay, so growing up, I was always confused by the USDA food ratings or food choices for beef. And to be honest, they are kind of tricky. I mean, you have select, choice, prime, and if you really don't know the definitions of those and how they're being graded, you'll be pretty confused and surprised too. So think of this video more as a guide for new cooks, new cooks that are trying to buy their own food, that are getting into home cooking. What I did know as a young kid was, the more fat that you had on a steak, the more expensive it was. And that doesn't necessarily translate to having a lot of fat on the outside of the steak. You can have a really low grade cut or just in general, a tougher cut that could have a lot of fat on the outside, but that does not necessarily mean it's a higher end steak. What you wanna look for is marbling. If you don't know what marbling is, essentially it's the fat in between the muscles, which you'll see in the center of the steak and not necessarily what you'll find on the outside of the steak. The more fat that you have between the muscles inside of the steak that you can see, the marbling, the little veiny stuff that you'll look at if you're looking directly on top of the steak, the higher quality it is, the more money it is because that translates to tenderness, flavor, and just overall a better experience. Now in this video, I'm gonna to stick to the grades that anybody can get at their local grocery store, and that's usually select, choice, and prime. I'm not gonna mention Wagyu or A5, although they're absolutely amazing and I don't have anything against them. If you can afford it, go for it. But for the most part, for most people, Wagyu and A5 is a whole nother level. It's really expensive and it's hard to get. So we're gonna to stick to select, choice, and prime. Okay, now let's talk about some myths. I know you guys have heard these myths. I heard them growing up in elementary school, but you had things like cafeteria grade or grade A, or that ground beef or hot dogs or whatever are made out of other animals. And sometimes they are, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's talk about cafeteria grade. There's really no such thing as cafeteria grade. I mean, at least not for beef, at least not for steak. And I actually don't even know what it's referring to. Cafeteria grade could mean anything, but generally speaking, as kids, it just meant that it was really, really low quality, it was tough, and we didn't like it at all. Now, if I had to guess, I've never personally worked in an elementary school cafeteria before, but they're probably using select as their choice for beef. Likewise, grade A. Grade A is a funny one because I remember, again, as a kid, you'd go, that's grade A stuff. That's grade A. That's amazing. And that's actually not the case. For beef, there's no such thing as grade A. I think for chicken there is, but for beef, there's no such thing as grade A. If you see anything like that for beef, run the other way. And lastly, I wanted to address hot dogs and sausages and all that. You can get all beef hot dogs or sausages or you can get beef and pork or all pork or all chicken or turkey or whatever. Nowadays, you can make sausage out of anything. So that's kind of a hint. It can be made out of really disgusting stuff, but it's not always the case. If you buy quality, you can expect quality. But generally speaking, yes, hot dogs are made out of the leftover beef, you know, stuff that nobody wants. And really you can think of hot dogs and sausages more as not being wasteful, if you want to put it in kind terms. When you go to the grocery store and you see ground beef that's just packaged or, you know, it's labeled reduced price or something like that, usually that's the shop's leftovers that they've kind of ground it up, put together, and they're selling it to A, make some money, make a profit, B, so there's not a lot of waste. Generally speaking, if you can, try to ground your own ground beef. It's fantastic. You can use chuck. You can even use some of the leftovers from a dry age ribeye. And you can really play with that fat to lean, you know, ratio and make some amazing ground beef. So for ground beef, yes, there is a little bit of a be careful, you know, make sure you know what you're buying. But the stuff that you may have heard of as a kid growing up, that's more for hot dogs or sausages. But again, there's good quality stuff out there. Okay, now let's talk specifically about the three USDA choices for beef. And the first one being Select. Select is the cheapest cut that I would buy personally. I don't think there's anything below that, but 
I don't know, I've never wanted to go below select. Now for select, I've specifically reserved this grade of beef for stuff that I know is going to be cooked for a long duration of time. Like if I'm making a stew, or if I'm making birria or anything like that, I know that getting a tough piece of meat may not be, you know, the end all for the recipe. It's gonna get slowly cooked, it's gonna be tender, it's gonna be fall off the bone. But generally speaking, I do try to avoid select. It's tougher, there's not a whole lot of marbling, and generally speaking, it's a lot harder to work with. And there's not too much flavor, it's not really tender. But with that being said, you can do a lot of great things with select beef, but it's gonna require a lot of effort from you. There's things you can do like cutting against the grain, seasoning it, or even better, if you actually marinate it overnight, you can add a lot of tenderness and flavor to an otherwise really cheap cut. So that's select. And that actually brings me to my next cut, which is choice. Choice sits right in the middle. It's in between. It's not the best cut of meat. It's not the worst cut of meat but you get a lot of bang for your buck and it's the choice that I buy 80% of the time. No pun intended. It's a fantastic cut of beef. You can find it anywhere and usually it's on sale. At your local grocery store, Stater Brothers, Ralph's, Vons, wherever you guys shop, that's usually the cut that you'll find a coupon for or they'll mail you out, you know, their weekly ads, their weekly specials, choice cut. It's actually really good. You can do a lot with it. It has plenty of marbling. And if you hand pick it, hand select it yourself or ask, you know, the meat cutter to cut it for you at the supermarket, you can get a really good cut. Just inspect it. Make sure you have that marbling that you want. Because a lot of times when those pieces are on sale, they're kind of on the edge. They are a choice, but leaning more towards select. So try to get a good cut. Look for that marbling. Another thing about choice is it dry ages beautifully. I usually try to dry age the best steak that I can get because it's really more of a treat. But nowadays with the prices, I find that if you dry age choice, you get a lot of bang for your buck. You get a great steak and it's just fantastic. It works really, really well. It's very cost effective. I'm gonna talk about dry aging a little bit more in detail later. But there's some myths with that as well. But yeah, choice, you're doing pretty well. And 80% of the time, that's what I buy. The next grade is Prime. And Prime is my personal favorite. Yes, I actually prefer Prime over Wagyu or A5 just because again, cost and benefit. And you can find it, it's readily available. I highly recommend you buy Prime in bulk if you can. When I do buy Prime, if I want Prime ribeyes, I go to like Costco or I go to an actual butcher. I mean, an actual butcher that's at a slaughterhouse and I pick out a whole, you know, rack of Prime ribeye. And that's usually like 18 pounds or something like that. I take it home, slice it up, vacuum seal it, put it in my freezer. If you buy it in bulk and you can find it in bulk, like Costco, Sam's Club, uh, you know, any of those other major food providers, it's way cheaper than buying individual steaks. Sometimes at Costco, if I don't see it outside, I'll go right up to the window and I'll tap on the glass and I'm like, hey, I'm looking for a entire rack of prime ribeye. Just give me the whole thing. Don't cut it, don't do anything, just give it to me. I'll take care of everything. And they give me like this kind of funny look and I think they assume I have a restaurant or something. But he's like, okay, slaps on a sticker, and it's way cheaper than if I would have bought the individual cut. They usually give me some kind of discount. But Prime is absolutely fantastic. You're getting the highest quality that you can get aside from Wagyu or A5. The marbling is great. It's extremely tender. It's juicy. It's flavorful. Everything that you want out of a steak, out of beef, Prime's it. And it's really easy to cook. It's really easy to work with. And you're guaranteed, as long as you don't screw it up or overcook it, to have an amazing meal that's going to pretty much impress everybody. Dry age prime will literally melt in your mouth. So yeah, prime is fantastic, but I only buy it about 15% of the time, usually in bulk, and it will last me for the entire year. We cut it up, we vacuum seal it, we're good to go. So let's talk about dry aging and the myths to dry aging. I have a couple of videos on dry aging. Dry aging is great, you can do it at home. There's a special bag that actually works as a membrane that allows you to safely dry age at home if that's, you know, something that you're afraid of or you don't wanna take any risks. But if you have a dedicated fridge, you can actually dry age pretty easily at home. But back to my point, what dry aging does, it's basically going to take whatever you already have and it's gonna intensify it. There's a myth out there that if you go out and you buy a select choice of beef and you dry age it, it's gonna magically create all this marbling and become a choice grade or a prime grade. 
and that's not the case. And it's also the same thing with the Prime. If you go out and you buy a Prime ribeye and you dry age you know, the entire rack and you cut into it, it's not gonna magically turn into Wagyu or A5. So I just wanna level set everybody. What dry aging does do is enhance the flavors because you're gonna get different flavors, different textures, it's gonna tenderize the meat and you are going to get a better piece of meat, but it's not going to skip a grade. If that makes any sense. There's one more thing I wanted to mention with select that I want you guys to be careful with. Don't get ripped off. There's a lot of these like health conscious or, you know, natural, whatever websites and businesses that are trying to sell you select grade beef and they're labeling it as grass fed or natural or healthy because of the lack of fat or marbling in the meat. All you're doing is just buying select beef and they are upselling you based on marketing. Usually these businesses are found on healthy websites and they usually offer you some sort of a monthly thing where they ship out beef to you or meat in general, chicken, lamb, whatever. And they really try to emphasize on the healthiness and the reduced fat and it's good for you and it's grass fed and all this stuff. But at the end of the day, it's select. So just be careful with that. I'm not saying all of them are like that, but just watch out for that. Know the differences. Marbling fat in between for beef is a good thing. It means it's gonna cost more money. You're buying better quality. It may not be great for your heart or your health, but that's where your money's going to. So don't get ripped off. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so here's my final thoughts. Choice grade is a fantastic grade. It's really the happy medium for me and it's my most frequently bought choice for steaks. It's found everywhere. There's usually weekly ads or sales and it's relatively easy to get your hands on and you can do a lot with it. Choice grade is fantastic. I think you should definitely try Prime. Prime is a whole nother level. And if you do try Prime, make sure you buy it in bulk because you're gonna save way more money. Select is definitely not something that I buy very often. And it usually is something that I reserve for a really cheap dish or a dish that I know is gonna get tenderized and slowly cooked. And I don't really have to worry about the texture. Now I'm not talking about cuts. Remember, we're just talking about grades. There's also other cuts and different cuts that are cheaper or you know you have to finesse a little bit more. We're just talking about grades. I'll probably talk about cuts another time in another video. But yeah, select, I generally just kind of stay away from it. Leave me a comment below. I really want to hear from you guys. What's your favorite cut? What do you buy as your everyday cut for beef? And what do you reserve for those special occasions? I know there's Wagyu and A5. I didn't touch on those. I'll probably talk about them in another video. And when you go to a grocery store, how do you select your meat? What are you looking for in that moment to make sure that you're buying the best cut? Leave me a comment below and I will definitely reply to you. But otherwise, that's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative. Check out my other videos and I will catch you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Hey, everybody. How'd you guys like that last video? Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified of my next video. And if you can, please share with your family and friends. I would really appreciate it. Here's some more content that I think you guys are really gonna enjoy. Check them out. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.